Okay, this is going to be a three card oracle for you today. I hope you liked the video. If you do like it, please do like it. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Okay, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to put down three cards, one, two, and three, and uh, you're going to choose one, two, or three of them. And uh, have a question in your mind, um, uh, some issue that you want to deal with for yourself or for somebody else even, but just make sure that you have it really firmly implanted in your mind. And I'll put those three cards down, you'll make a choice. Uh, then uh, once I reveal the yes, no, or maybe card, uh, then I'll do a diet cross finish for each of those. Six card uh, expansion of what, of what that uh, meaning is for you. So let's do that. Now the thing is, you really need to get this set into your intention, and uh, I recommend take a minute, uh, you know, gather yourself together, be calm, decide what it is you want to uh, ask a question about, and then send that out into the ether. Okay, you might want to stop the tape right now, go get yourself something to drink, uh, or just uh, settle yourself in, and then start the, the uh, video again when you're ready to, um, you know, pick a card. Okay, so these are the Toth Tarot deck, Alist Alistair Crowley. And these are from U.S. Game Systems. And uh, these cards are pretty amazing. Um, some like to use them if they've got kind of a severe uh, subject uh, that they think needs, uh, um, you know, a very direct uh, answer to them, in, in, uh, not a, a flowery answer. The guidebook is very useful, as a matter of fact. It's easy to read, and it's got some interesting uh, uh, information here on the um, author of the card and the painter of the cards and uh, with some uh, collaboration. So uh, I'll just read this one little thing. This is by Lady Frida Harris, who actually painted these cards. And she says, Arthur Crowley's Toth Tarot deck, the tarot could be described as God's picture book, or it could be likened to a celestial game of chess, the trumps being the pieces to be moved according to the law of their own order over a checkered board of the four elements. I love that. That's a very insightful way. If you think of the artist using that as her guiding light to designing the cards, that's, that's pretty awesome. Uh, the cards themselves are are easy to read if you read the cards. In other words, if you don't impose your uh, predetermined notion of what a particular uh, card is supposed to mean, uh, like I often do, because I'm very much like the Rider Waite system, but these Toth cards are amazing. What happens here is that um, they tell you here, in a, I don't know if you can see it, but in the background you see this tells you this is Wands, and of course this is the Prince of Wands, and then the, um, the Major Arcana, they show them in the very faintly, you see here it says Trumps, and uh, then this tells you this is Art. So they're not exactly the same uh, order of divination as the Rider Waite system, but not far off. And if you take a minute to familiarize yourself with, the, with how they uh, are ordered, then I think you'll be okay. And I'd just like to give you this chance to look at all these cards spread out in case you don't get a chance to see uh, a lot of tarot cards. Um, maybe you're thinking about buying some cards and this would help you make a decision for or against these. They're a little big, so they're awkward to use, but once you get used to them, then that's fine. Just like anything, once you get used to using them, um, you know, you acclimate yourself to the system. So this is the Aleister Crowley Toth deck. Love these cards, actually. Okay, so this will be a three-card oracle, and what I'll do is I'll lay out three cards face down. You'll choose one, two, or three, or several of them, or even all of them, and uh, you want to have something uh, in mind that uh, will, uh, a yes, no, or maybe question could be answered with those three cards. So start to think about what is it that's important to you, uh, what is an issue that you'd like to get some insight to, where a simple yes, no, or maybe answer uh, would be useful. Then, once we've reveal, revealed those three cards, um, you can see what the answer is, but then I'll do a dyadic cross, which is a six card uh, uh, layout, to further define uh, any help uh, in those three cards. So, take some time, get a deep breath, let it out slowly. I'm going to get a sip of water right now. You might want to do the same and take a few minutes 
you can even stop the tape if you need to, to decide um, how to center yourself, maybe get yourself a glass of water, or a cup of tea, or some, some nice beverage to accompany you while we do this draw. Okay, so from here we're going to take three cards. One, two, and three. Okay. Put these aside for a minute while I give you a chance to decide what cards you'd like to choose. So we have one, two, three, one, two, three. Remember, you can stop the uh, video and, uh, you know, decide what you want to pick. One, two, three, one, two, and three. So the first card, and I'm going to jot down oh, whether these are yes, no, or maybe cards as I read them. Let me get another drink of water. <clears throat> the first card, if that's what you chose, this is the Nine of Swords. And in this Toth deck, this is um, defined as cruelty. So the Nine of Swords is typically a nightmare. Okay, so the swords are truth, justice, uh, rules, law, uh, how I define them. And uh, the Nine of Swords in the typical Rider Waite deck uh, is uh, depicted as a nightmare. Here uh, we see in this Toth deck that these swords are called cruelty. Cruelty. So this is a no card. So whatever you're considering, this is just telling you no. This isn't the time to, to move forward with this. Number two card, if that's what you chose, is the Nine of Wands. And this is strength. So wands are uh, action, uh, planning, uh, moving forward, fire. Uh, actions are getting, uh, wands are getting something done of wands. is depicted typically as a, a little bit embattled. But in this deck, they're called strength. So that's a yes card. My goodness, I've got a uh, tickle in my throat. Always happens when I start to do a reading, it seems. So the number three card, if that's what you chose, is the star. So this is pretty far along in the uh, Major Arcana. This is number 17. And this card is beautiful, as a matter of fact. If you can see, it takes a minute to focus on here. The star card is, um, you know, really the center of attention, really bringing things into the light. And here we see that this maiden, you see her little face here? Her hair is kind of swirled around. These are her feet. This is one arm kind of emptying out this cup of emotion. Another arm is up here just kind of uh, bathing herself in the passion uh, from this cup. It almost looks like a, a Krieg light or a light shining down on her. But this is a cup of uh, emotion just bathed down over her in front of the world. Uh, could be the moon even. And uh, in this starry night. So this is a yes card. And this is the star. And this is a great big yes. A lot of emphasis in this card. So that's what we have to start here. So now we'll do a diet across on your first choice which is, uh, for a signifier, we have this nine of, of uh, swords, and that is depicted in this deck as cruelty. So swords, like I say, being truth, um, justice, rules, law, those are the things that uh, the swords represent. And this nine of swords with cruelty just uh, lets you know that those could be some of the obstacles that you face. And this, is, uh, this card is telling us, no, let's don't do this right now. But let's get uh, five more cards out of here to flesh that out. One, okay, these want to come. Two, three, four, and five. Okay, I'm gonna sit this over here to kind of work on, on those two, and we'll see what we have as a challenge to this Nine of Swords, this cruelty, this kind of, no, stop. The challenge to that is a Seven of Wands. Again, uh, wands are uh, actions, plans, moving forward. Uh, and the Seven of Wands is Valor. So the Seven of Wands is telling us that, yeah, typically this in the Rider Waite deck is, is kind of uh, depicted as uh, someone up on a hill with six wands poking up at them, and they're holding one wand, kind of fending themselves off. And you see, in fact, here, you've got one very strong, very primitive, uh, uh, almost on fire. You can see the fire coming out of this one wand who's laid on top of these other more elegant uh, wands, these other plans, these other actions. But this one is taking precedence and saying, nope. We're going to stop right now, and we're going to um, uh, make some plans. We're going to decide what our actions are before we go too much further. So, yes, yeah, so this card, this Nine of Swords is telling us, no, stop. And it's challenged by the Seven of Wands telling us, hey, hang on. Let's, let's sort this thing out. 
the base of this reading then is this nine of cups, which is happiness. So cups are, of course, are emotion or passion, compassion, and the nine of cups is just overflowing with all of that. And so this is telling us uh, with this happiness, this cups, as the base of this reading, that uh, we did have or we do have, uh, you know, a good, firm, uh, emotional base uh, for this issue that you're dealing with. The past of this reading then with this eight of cups is an uh, indolence. Okay, so Eight of Cups is typically, you know, something kind of feeling like you're going to have to leave something behind. Something's going to take precedence over something else. And indeed, you see here on the, in these cups, we've got uh, several of them that are pouring over some emotion over into other cups. Well, there are some of these cups that indeed are empty and uh, seem to be kind of used up. So uh, the past of this reading is telling us that uh, the emotions uh, that we had here that underpin everything, something's been used from that, okay? And there's something left behind. And in fact, we've got... Four cups that are empty and four cups that are still overflowing. So in the sky of this reading, uh, for this note card, are the lovers. Okay, this is great. So this is the major arcana. This is number seven of the major arcana. And if you can see in here, um, so you've got the lovers down here really uh, crossing arms, uh, making a union to, to get this thing done. And uh, you've got the king and the queen up here also in sort of a negotiation uh, and uh, I just love all the depiction in this card. Even up here, you've got a little um, um, ch cherub uh, shooting an arrow down uh, for these lovers. So the lover's card, especially when it's the Major Arcana, is all about companionships, uh, unions, uh, uh, getting together with someone of significance to uh, work with you. Uh, and this could even be a, a personal situation, uh, but it certainly is finding uh, companions to help you on this. So that's what's in the sky. So this is telling us that uh, let's look for the very best, the truest companions, helpmates, not necessarily a person. It could be uh, an organization. It could be a set of rules, um, but uh, something to help you guide you in this decision. But the final outcome for all of this if you chose number one, is the Knight of Wands. Interesting that the wands are, are somewhat uh, prominent in this. So the Knight of Wands, again, wands are actions, a forward movement, planning, short-term plans even. And this Knight of Wands, you can see him right here, this fella, here's his helmet. This is him sitting on the, on the steed, okay? And this steed is, in fact, on fire. His wand is on fire, and he's getting ready to get something done. I always like to say that the knight in the royal suite, you know, the page of the knight, the queen and the king. So the knight is the fellow that when you give him a, a, a remit, when you give him a, a charge, when you give him something to do, he's going to take that plan and put it into action. And this guy is really really ready, rare to, to get it going. So don't feel like because you, you're you not encouraged to move forward right now that uh, eventually you won't be able to move forward because you will. And just to talk about it again, so this Nine of uh, Swords is telling us, yeah, this is, this is cruelty. Let's just take a minute and uh, we never want to encourage cruelty. It may not be actual literal cruelty on your part or someone's part uh, for you, but it's, you know, negativity. Uh, the uh, challenge to that with the Seven of Wands is really holding all the other plans at bay. And that would be for what? While you work out your major plan, okay? This Nine of Cups in the bottom, this compassion, this emotion, to tell us, listen, we had a full uh, uh, self of all this compassion that we needed to get through this. In this past, with this Eight of Cups, some of that has been used and left behind, but there's still some to carry us forward. With this Knight, uh, uh, or sorry, with these lovers up in the sky, it's telling us, encouraging us to find partnerships, to find companion uh, information uh, to help us through this and then eventually with this night of, 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 wa of wands uh, don't feel like you're missing out on something this there will be something uh, come of this just not right now take a beat okay so I'm gonna put this up here just to wait for us and incorporate these back into the deck and then we'll go on for a divination for the number two card, if that's the one that you chose. I'll do a little shuffle, get these mixed up, get those cards back in. And of course, that number two card is that nine of wands, strength. Again, like I say, wands are actions, motion, fire, plans, getting something done. Nine of wands is strength. So that one wand is really holding dominion over those other wands in this depiction here. So nine of wands, strength. I'm going to need five more cards, just like before. Okay, so this is one, two, three, four, okay, and five. Nine of Wands strength is a signifier for this card. 
these five cards here are going to flesh out that for us. So, so okay, so we have the Nine of Wands, Strength. That's a wonderful signifier. This is a yes card that's telling us, yeah, we can get this done. But what's the challenge to that? The challenge to this is this, uh, okay, so this Three of Swords, which is Sorrow. Now, the Three of Swords in the typical Rider Waite deck, remember, this is a Toth deck that I'm using, the typical Rider Waite deck, the Three of Swords is like three swords through a heart. So it's really heartbreak, and here's to find even, uh, uh, of course, as Sorrow. So the challenge, and swords are um, um, truth, justice, rules, law. So this uh, challenge to this um, uh, strength is some sorrow, okay? So there may be some regret um, regarding this decision, but uh, understand that the uh, overpowering influence here is strength. Uh, the base of this reading is uh, the Seven of Cups. And uh, the Seven of Cups, you know, Cups, again, are emotion, uh, passions, and these emotions and passions are really fraught with, and it's even here called debauch, so, you know, um, uh, uh, unpleasantness. Uh, so this Seven of Cups is telling us, listen, this can be a, it's a cautionary tale for us emotionally regarding this issue that you're dealing with. So the Seven of Cups, so what underpins this is the Seven of Cups debauchery, okay? So, um uncomfortableness, uh, not pleasant, not uh, uh, something you would seek out. Uh, but if you know that this is here, then at least you know how to deal with what's going on here, because it looks like this is a yes uh, movement. Uh, the past of this reading, then, okay, this is nice. So with the four of the major arcana, or the four, I'm sorry, no, this is the four of wands. So the four of wands is usually a, a, um, a celebration, okay? It's a, a, a smallish celebration towards something uh, larger. And I'm a little confused here because in this uh, Toth deck, even though it's four wands, what have we got? One, two, three, four. Okay, it looks like eight, but it's four because each one follows right through. So this four of wands is completion. Completion, celebrations. And I always like to say that the four of wands is sort of a smaller celebration on towards something larger. So we came into this with some sort of positivity that was setting us up for this bigger um, decision or victory. In the sky of this reading, then, is adjustment. So five, six, seven, eight of Trump. So this is the major arcana, the number eight, and this is called adjustment. Okay, so it's almost like a justice sort of a thing or a temperance um, uh, involved here. So this card you see that we've got here, this uh, female figure is holding on to the truth, this justice, these rules, this law. It's balanced out on these scales. Okay, and uh, it's a very sharp card. As a matter of fact, it's flooded with intention. And uh, but this is telling us that there's adjustment at the very top of this that we should be aware of. We need to keep uh, foremost in our mind. OK, and the the, um, the yes card. But then in the final outcome for this, then with this eight of discs, which is the eight of pentacles, the eight of coins, this is uh, prudence. OK, so uh, the eight of coins is telling us, listen, we have pl th this outcome will be plenty fruitful for us. OK, prudence. But we want to make sure that we're using our value uh, in the end, in the best way possible. And so that could certainly be why we have these cautions uh, here. Okay, so just to talk about it again, we have this um, seven, was it? Seven of wands, nine of wands, which is telling us, yeah, we've got a plan above all these other plans. It's challenged by this three of swords, this sorrow. Okay, some regret could be involved or may have been involved. Underpinning the whole thing, the seven of cups, a lot of emotion, but kind of, of a lesser intention kind of emotion uh, is is sort of what's underpinning this issue and then with this four of wands over here completes a smaller celebration adjustment and under the they're going to have to balance this thing out and then in the final outcome with this eight of pentacles prudence so this is a cautious yes this is a yes telling us study what's involved here weigh what's happening and know that this will be fruitful and we should always keep prudence uh, in our thoughts okay i love that name prudence i like that name for, for a girl so we're going to take um these cards, put them back in the deck, and go on to the last card, number three, in this three-card oracle, and the signifier is the star. Love the star. The star is just celebrations, you know, just bathed, bathed in all of this emotion. We're red, it's like, imagine being under a shower. That water represents passion, compassion, just letting it flow over yourself, and then letting it flow out. Uh, with anything that's impure uh, that you'd want to rinse off yourself and just show yourself as this wonderful star. Okay, so let's shuffle these up just a little bit. Maybe cut them. I don't feel like this needs too much manipulation here. Okay, 
and we'll get five cards out of here to finish this divination. So this is one, two, three, four, and five. Big yes card. That's nice with a star. So these cards have done all they can for us so far. We're gonna, remember, this is not part of our divination. It's just part of the other set. So we're only looking at this star for you, number three. Yes card. Challenge to that star. Then, ah, interesting. So the Five of Cups is disappointment in this Toth deck. And indeed, in the Rider Waite system, it usually shows uh, a couple or two or three cups spilled over and two cups or three cups left to carry on. So these and cups, again, are emotion, compassion. Um, and um, so the challenge to this star is possibly some uh, regret, some disappointment. The base of this reading, then, with this emperor, that's fantastic. And look at this emperor. Can you make him out? So he's here. He's looking off to the side. He's holding up his staff. He's got the, this globe of all that represents all the uh, uh, what he what he holds reign over. And he's very comfortably seated on his throne. So this is a very comfortable uh, in charge uh, emperor. And so we should feel like that's how we come into this. Remember, this card is not part of this. Okay. The past of this reading is this two of discs, this two of coins, and this is change. Okay, so look, the yin and the yang, making sure that you find a balance. This is a serpent that's grabbed onto his own tail for this infinity. Okay, so we can balance this thing out. We come into this probably um, understanding or having dealt with some sort of an imbalance and look, the star. And you know, often when you are the spotlight or when the decision is a major one, there's there are these opposing forces that make us really kind of play into that spotlight. The uh, sky of this reading, the Empress. So my goodness, we have the Emperor and the Empress. So this is a very fortuitous um, uh, uh, reading for you. Uh, so the Empress, the number three of the Major Arcana, compared with the Emperor. So she's in the sky. So we start off this with some uh, great amount of authority or, or uh, yeah, authority to get through this decision. And then the Empress just shows us we need to aim for something a little less than that. We will have used some of our authority to get there. Of course, anytime you show a shining star in something, you burned up some of that uh, of the fuel that you have there. And so, but it's only going to reduce us to this Empress, which is a very fruitful, very knowledgeable, very beautiful card to have as our uh, aiming point or in the sky. And then look at that. The cards have repeated, which I love it when they do that. So this is the Eight of Discs, Prudence. Again, this yes decision is just telling us once we come out of this very fruitful decision, let's guide, or let's pay attention to the value that we end up with, okay, to set us up for whatever our next journey is. So that's very nice. These were three, uh, wait a minute, yeah, three very nice cards to have today for our pull, and I hope that was useful for you. Okay, so I hope that was really good for you, that uh, something uh, meaningful came out of that reading for you. Uh, if it didn't uh, hit home with you right now, you might want to let it sit, let it stew, come back to it a little bit later. Maybe jot down some notes when you're watching these videos, to, you know, so that you don't have to run through the whole video again. And, um, and then if it doesn't just ring true at all, it just doesn't, and it's not for you today. That's fine. I'm Mark, My Journey Through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now.